Hey, what's up? This is Hyun Suk Yoon, and welcome back to the SCIR model tutorial with Numerous Model Builder. Now that we have learned the basic gist of the SCIV model, uh, we're going to go ahead and find how the model differs slightly when we create the model in a discrete time step. Um, this is going to be another interesting video done by Krithi, so I hope you enjoy it. Hey everyone, and welcome to this video on how to create a discrete model, discrete disease model in this platform. Now here we have it already set up, but I will go through a quick rundown. This is the discrete equivalent of equations 2. It, this is the form it takes on an interval of uh, time t to t plus 1. Now section 2.3 in the paper explains all of the mathematics behind the systems and the equations, so we won't go into that. However, I will give a brief rundown to just say that discrete time models are represented by systems of different equations. And computationally, they are more convenient than continuous models. However, that doesn't mean that one is better than the other, because in fact, that is not true. Now, solutions to discrete models will be different from solutions to continuous, because tau is constantly changing in a continuous model. All right, now let's go to the one we've built here. So I built this, let's take off the arrows so I'm not confusing you too much, but essentially we have susceptible individuals, those exposed to the pathogen, and then after a period of latency, we find the infected individuals, and then the ones that have a long-term immunity. Now all of these different terms are essentially what you can think of as variables that I've created to be able to pull into all of these sequences these are different states, and I'll explain that in a second as well. But I've pulled in these different terms within these state components to be able to calculate mathematically what's going on in a disease model. And I have these two outputs, kind of like if you go to the video on logistic models, you'll see we have a table and a graph as well. And this is just a way to physically represent that output so that when we launch the system, we can see what's going on with our model. Now tau here is the variable I was referring to that changes between the two types of models and n would represent our population and other than that you can refer to the paper for all of our variables. Now I'm going to go ahead and launch the system. Ah uh, yes, there is one thing I would like to mention. So if you watched the logistic model, you'll notice that these states, these stocks were green. And the reason they were green, as I described, was because we were using a stock and flow system. Now stock and flow is continuous. The value is being replaced each time. Sequence for a discrete model is not continuous, it's discrete. And therefore, there's a value that's being added on each time, but that doesn't replace the previous value. All right, and everything else is the same as the stuff we've been talking about in previous videos. So if you're unsure about anything, please feel free to go back to one of those. Now our start and end time, we're gonna say zero to 100. I'll show you how to change that in a second. We have a discrete model, we have one layer, and I think we are good. So let's run the system and see what happens. All right, so we have a beta slider in the corner, just so you know. And we've got a graph in our table here. They're positioned a little weirdly, so let's pull them up here. All right, so all of our variables and inputs are the same, and I'm gonna hit a run, and there we go. Cool, okay. Now let's say I wanted to change the time to 20. So I'm gonna hit 20, do a launch, shows up as 20 there, there we go. So now I just want to show you the differences between that time scale. So when we hit 20 years, we see that this incidence is increasing, but because we haven't had a big enough time frame, we can't necessarily see what happens on a longer scale. But essentially, here we go. This is our discrete model on this platform.